the Joe Rogan experience. If you're lucky, like we were talking about 100 years, if you're lucky, you get to 100 years. I'm 51. I'm halfway there, right? If yeah. I'm lucky, if everything works out perfect, and it probably isn't, let's be honest. <laughs> I beat the shit out of my body, right? So it's probably not going to make it. Do you want to make long. it to be 100, Joe? I'll see what's up. Yeah, <laughs> I do because I, I'm, a, I'm a science nerd. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by all these 3D printed hearts and all this shit. I want to see what the fuck they can do. Wow. I really think. And talking to guys like David Sinclair and all these anti-aging specialists, I think they're on the verge of being able to reverse aging. That They're treating aging like it's a disease, like it's a disease at the cellular level. Instead of accepting it in that like, well, you get older, hey, you're going to have to accept, you can't do as much, your body's not going to work as well. Why? Maybe that's not the case. Maybe if they can correct certain things about the human body, maybe they can correct that. And I think it's very likely that in the future, I don't think that's an insurmountable uh, situation. I think they're going to be able to correct what happens to your body when it ages. The deterioration mm -hmm. that's caused by the aging process, your body produces less hormones, your body starts to slow down, Alzheimer's, all these different things. I think they're going to be able to correct those things. Wow. The problem with that is... Then what? We're going to live mm -hmm. forever? Mm -hmm. You're going to be happy living forever? Like, what if when you die, it's amazing? What if when you die, there really is a heaven? You really, you really do go to some spectacular dimension filled with love and peace and, and happiness, and there's no emotions like we think about here. There's no fear. There's not, none of the things that hold people back, none of the anxiety and the angst. It's just consciousness and love. And then you're wasting your time here just trying to stay alive. Taking pills to live to be a million. <laughs> Boy, um, you open a big ass can of worms right there. Well, I, I would tell you, um, Joe, without a shadow of a doubt, none whatsoever, death is not the end. You don't think so? I know. I know, Joe. How do you know? Because I've been dead. Right. Yes, I've been dead. What, what what about that experience cemented it in your head? Um, when I like I said, it was the most peaceful, um, and and I I don't feel like it was the most peace, most restful, most. I was I woke up laughing. I was yeah <laughs> yeah. My wife said, really? I, was, I was overjoyed. You woke up laughing. Yeah, I I was overjoyed. Do you remember anything about what happened when you blacked out? Extre e the 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 time was extremely peaceful. Extreme. I didn't have a, a worry. Extremely joy, and I was not uh, sad at all. You know, I was overjoyed, very happy, very peaceful, and uh, it erased any fear. That I might have had, and, I, and and any fear of dying is gone. I don't fear death at all, and so I may, maybe that's why I don't want to live to be a hundred. Because yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind visiting that place again, man. It was so much peace, so much, and it wasn't like you know, um, this is you know, I'm just in the ground. I'm a, and I'm not a plant, uh, just dirt. Mm. You know, I know that I'm in a, a very comfortable place and, and, you know, I wouldn't mind visiting again. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. So I'm definitely, I hold no fear. And so when I say that it's, it's definitely not the end, you're, I believe that your soul, you know, so people have a different name for it, consciousness or whatever, is definitely eternal. I mean, because how else could you have these uh feelings or emotions or you know have that that sort of comfort the feeling of comfort and being in the, the right place if something didn't continue because my life my life was gone the essence of life my, my body mm. was you know gone it was gone flat line dead whatever i told my doctor that i died and he said no you actually it's called some kind of pause or some shit like that and i said look if i if the pause lasted doc i wouldn't be talking right now <laughs> so uh I, yeah. okay you call it a pause i thought well during that pause i was dead so uh it, it's it was a wonderful feeling Joe. well i think with a guy like you that's so physical and you've been so physical your whole life 
the big fear is to not be able to take care of yourself or move. Like that's what we were talking about when you get right. to talk about being a hundred, mm-hmm. like having someone wipe your ass and take care of you. Like that's the big fear. It's yeah. not death. Death is just peaceful. It's the end. But the the big fear is the deterioration of the physical body to the point where you, it's just painful. Everything's painful. You can't go anywhere. You can't count on yourself. Yeah, it's uh, it's very peaceful. But I definitely don't think it's the end. I think it's the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, it's an overwhelming feeling. Like I had, I was able to peek over into the other side mm-hmm. and that it's definite assurance that it's not the end and that there is something else on the other side. I have that assurance and it's able to peek in, just peek into it. Well, I think we all have this feeling that we are something other than our body. Most definitely. I mean, I, I, I have that feeling. Like, I feel like there's like a little ball of energy in there that moves this thing around well you're right <laughs> yeah, but that's what it feels like yeah, it always it, feels it like is. that yeah that's what i i've always rejected the label atheist like people say are you religious i'm like i was when i was a little kid i, I had to go to catholic school and i you know i did all that jazz but uh, my parents when i grew up were hippies after that my mom split up from my dad my mom shacked up with my stepfather who's a he's a hippie mm-hmm. and there was no no church after that but I'm not an atheist. I'm not. I don't know. Like I, I don't believe anybody that says they know what life is or what life means or what happens when you die. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your thoughts. But you don't know. And anybody that says they know what happens when they die, I know what happens when I die. It'll be black and and cold, and that is the end. And just like there was nothing before, there'll be nothing at the end. And like, you don't know that. No. You're just saying that. Mm-hmm. There is no God. How do you say that? How do you say that? <laughs> well, one day, what if you stand in front of God or uh, in in God's presence in some non-physical form, and then you're, you're weeping and in your, your arrogance and st- say, stating that there's no higher power. Like, it might be the the universe itself might be God. I mean, we don't know anything. You, we are l- strange little monkey people <laughs> living on this fucking planet, making things that uh, alter our environment, moving around, driving, flying, talking to each other, talking shit. But at the end of the day... You're only aware of what you've experienced. Right. And when you don't know, that's like when people have had, I've, I've talked to several friends that have had near-death experiences. Um, a, a very good friend of mine, she she was in a car accident, and she had a very similar thing where she said it was so peaceful. Yeah. She said, you know, they got, I think they got rear-ended and like really banged up. And when it felt like she was going to die, she felt so peaceful. It's so true, Drew. Yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of people that uh, have come that close to dying, uh, are all, a lot of them are going to say the same thing, that they have no fear of death anymore. Yeah. It's, it, it's erased. and uh, you, you. But you also have the feeling that you know that this existence on Earth, you know, when your physical body dies, is definitely not the end. And the way she describes it is exactly the way you do it. She's my manager, and you know I talk to her all the time. The way she describes things is essentially exactly how you did that it's just so peaceful oh, just man. felt just felt peaceful yeah and, but, but not uh you know like like people uh, who don't believe in that you know, you you're, uh, by the way let me let me say this. i'm not religious either yeah i was raised super religious in a super religious home by a a, a pentecostal uh, heaven or hell, brimstone, fire and brimstone Ooh. preacher. Uh, do they do the tongues? Oh, yes. Oh, that's hilarious. Shouting, that's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, speaking in tongues, everything, everything. You wow. Know, everything was a sin also. Mm. Everything, everything was, oh, dancing. Dancing was uh, a listening sin? Listening to rock and roll music. Whoa. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Everything was a sin. So I think that's really what drove me away from being a religious person. Yeah. I'm definitely not. I always say I'm a man of faith. Uh-huh. I have a, a tremendous amount of faith, but faith and religion are two different things. A lot of people confuse them. Yeah. And, and they, they talk about them as being the same, but they are definitely not. Uh, religious man-made and, you know, uh, a set of rules. And men say, okay, we're going to be this. And, and if you want to be this religion, then you're going to have to go by these rules. Yeah. And it's, and it's it's all man made, but faith is not man made. 
And so I'm a tremendous man of faith, but not religion. Yeah, some would say that like you're a spiritual person. That's like a thing that gets thrown around today. Like I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. People say that a lot. Like what does that mean? No one really knows. It's a strange sort of definition, but I, I feel what you're saying. Like that there's something more to this. Definitely. There's something more to this than just tissue and bone and blood moving on this rock that's traveling through the universe. There's something more. There's some there's something there's some and maybe it's just something more for us. But the the beauty of friendship and love and family, like those things are intense, beautiful, emotional experiences that I, I don't I don't know they, they seem to transcend just regular life itself. They seem to have a there's a higher power to them, a, a higher beauty to them. I think that's one of the things that we like when we see people doing something really great. We we love seeing people accomplish things because we we love we like seeing people succeed. We like seeing people like that have doubts and 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 something almost insurmountable and incredibly difficult in front of them, and then they they overcome. And it gives us all hope, and it gives us all like this inspiration, this feeling. We're connected in some sort of very very strange way. But I think you could just chalk it up. Oh, that's just camaraderie. We needed that because of evolution. That's how we stayed alive. Like maybe. Maybe, but maybe there's something else. Maybe the, the, whatever this consciousness is, that's totally not, no one has ever defined consciousness. And there's certain people that think that it occurs only in the brain and the neurons and the synapses. And it might, or that might just be an antenna. I mean, consciousness might very well be you are using your physical tissue to tune in to whatever this, this thing that we share is, this life force that we all seem to share. And when, when, when there's other things like looking in someone's eyes, man, like when, when you know someone's like there for you and you know you're there for them, like that camaraderie, that yep. intense camaraderie, there's, it's like that, that, that expression, the windows to the soul, that the eyes are the windows to the soul. It really does seem like it's that, true. right? Like yeah. you see people, mm -hmm. you see them, you know, like the avatar lady said, I see you. Yeah. You know? And you can, it's, um. Looking at being able to look into somebody's eyes, you can tell uh, a lot. Uh, you can tell if they're bullshit. <laughs> yes, if they're full yes. of shit or not, man. You can, or if they feel weird about something, yeah, feel insecure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe they can. feel like maybe this isn't a smart thing, or maybe 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 I should have done better by you, or yeah, maybe you I fucked tell. you over. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah can tell. you can tell that. And yeah. I, uh, I, I, I told the first first time I had the uh, uh, open heart surgery and flatlined three times. During that surgery, I also had an experience um, that also strengthens my belief in there being something after the body dies. I, I, I a vision or whatever you want to call it. Uh, okay, so I see. I, I was able to see my mother who had passed away uh, the year before, and uh, you know, I say I see my mother. I, I didn't see her face. I just heard her voice, and I knew it was her. And she was, um, you know, pleading to, uh, I say God, a lot of people may say, you know, what, whatever they look up to. And I ain't got no problem with that. I don't think that uh, because people don't believe exactly like I believe that they're doomed and they're going to hell. Although that was the way I was raised. Or if you don't believe like this, I mean, all Catholics, when I, when I quote to my dad, all Catholics were just lost. Mm. They're not going to make it because they don't, you know, believe. They believe the wrong shit. Yeah, they're they're not, fucked they up. don't believe the right shit. So, of course, they're not going to make it. What about it. Jews? Uh, they're not they going to make it. Too? Yeah, they're not going to make it. You don't believe like this. Muslims, fucked up. Oh, just lost, man. Mormons, <laughs> fucked up. Oh, man, you lost. Scientologists, really oh, fucked oh, up. Oh, yeah, especially. Really yeah. <laughs> you're especially lost. But, and that's, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's, that's how that's, they felt. Yeah, that's yeah. how they felt. That's how I was taught. And, that's and I just, you know, I don't believe that. Yeah. You got you got this. Uh, my dad was some people. They followed my dad. Thought that he could walk on water. He could do no wrong. And it's the same guy that you know, you know, break my nose and send me to the fucking emergency room and right. kick my. And my mom was a slave, mm -hmm. and that was perfectly fine with him. And and also, this was the guy that was fucking women in the church. But if you don't believe like I believe. You're going to hell. Yeah, people have a remarkable ability to be hypocrites. Yeah, they're super souls. And I've, I've seen that so much mm. 
from super religious people sure. that it just turned me off yeah. from being a religious person. Well, I think a lot of what it is is control. People want to control other people. They want to be able to tell people what to do and when to do it, and it gives them some power in their own life by doing so. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, man, I just, uh, you know, it destroyed my uh, um, faith and just super, you know, People that are in church every Sunday, every Tuesday. Yeah. We went to church three times a week. Three times a three week? Three times a week. Every Tuesday, every wow. Friday, and every Sunday. In church, man. In church. I mean, during the, the Watts riots, I'm a little kid. We went to church. Wow. Yeah. And with the, the, the guy, the soldiers, the National Guard on the streets, they pulled my dad over. I'm a little kid in the back seat. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to church. And I'm like, fuck, these guys, there's tanks on the street. This guy's got a fucking M16. And asking, and my dad's like, we're going to church. And I'm like, fuck, could you leave wow. us at home? Could you meet my brother? I'm like, could we leave? I want to be at home looking at fucking Heckle and Jekyll with cartoons, <laughs> man. I don't want to fucking be out here. These guys got me oh, man. But we went to church, man. So he was super dedicated, you know, to, you know, part of him was super dedicated to what he believed. And then, um, you know, you go over to Sister Sally's house to give her a consultation. And I'm looking in the, the room, her bedroom door is open, and there's my dad with his fucking T-shirt on. Sister Sally's in her slip and shit. And I guess me and my brother were there to be his uh, scapegoat or, you know, his excuse to my mom. You know, if I take them, then, I, you know, nothing yeah. could be going on wrong. But I'm like, I still remember that shit. I'm like, yeah. fuck, what? kind of consultation is he doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. 